we are going to break down the kipping ring rule, which is as follows. When it comes to this movement, there are two big areas that we are looking to master by performing this drill. Number one is the direction in which we pull with our arms. And number two is the momentum or the lift that we want to be able to generate from our hips. If you master those two aspects, they are going to really transfer to also helping you get your ring muscle. With that in mind, there are a few focus points that are going to help you master the drill and as such also master those two big elements. The first thing is the setup. When we set up, we want to have the bottom of the rings at around about hip height. And we want to place our feet directly underneath those rings. From there, we're going to lean back into a normal ring row where we hold on to the rings as we normally would if you were hanging in the rings, hanging in the pull-up bar. And you're going to keep the rings in a neutral or a flat position, as you can see here. You're also going to keep the rest of your body straight from your shoulders all the way down through your hips to your ankles. And from here, you're ready to essentially perform the movement. And the first thing is the direction in which we're pulling. When it comes to working on that area, you want to think about pulling your elbows out to the side. When looking directly from the side, if you're doing it properly, we should see that your elbows are in line with your shoulders. Additionally, or another way of looking at it, is that you want to pull those rings towards your shoulders. They should never touch the shoulders, but that is the direction we want to pull. A lot of people are often taught to pull towards the hips, but the issue with that is pulling towards your hips is gonna give you a bunch of lift, most likely, but it's not gonna help you transition through the rings. In fact, it almost does the opposite as you lean away from the rings while pulling towards your hips. By learning to pull towards your shoulders, you're still gonna generate lift. But what you're also gonna do is generate forward momentum that's gonna help you not just get up to the rings, but also through them as you perform the transition. What is also gonna help you generate lift, aside from mastering this pull, is learning to generate lift or momentum from the hips. So we want to go back to the start here, drop our hips towards the floor. They should never touch the floor, but we want to drop them down. So we almost enter this hollow position. And from there, we're gonna drive the hips up and as we drive them up, we're gonna pull with our arms. And if you're doing it correctly, what you will find is that the movement becomes much easier. And that is the easiest point of performance to look for. Driving your hips should generate momentum, which again, should make your life easier when pulling on the rings. If it doesn't, then we obviously need to practice. And a typical culprit for why driving your hips might not actually be making your life easier is if you're not maintaining enough tension while trying to be aggressive or trying to drive your hips up. So notice that I start in this straight position. And then as I said, I drop my hips, but once I drive them up and pull with my arms, I return to this essentially straight position from my shoulders through my hips down to my ankles. What I don't do is lose tension and end up shooting my hips all the way out here and entering this huge banana shape. That is typically not the optimal way to generate momentum. We need to be aggressive. We need to move our hips, but we also need to maintain tension so that the momentum we're generating actually translates to upward momentum for the entirety of our body. And that is the kipping ring row. The final point that I just want to also have you practice is I want you to keep your eyes forward. So continue to look forwards throughout the whole movement. And that will set you in good stead for the upcoming drills.